Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at monosaccharides and disaccharides. Two words you might not have come across before, but by the end of this video you'll be able to name them, you'll be able to draw them, you'll be able to talk about the links between in between monosaccharides, you'll be talking about how the disaccharides are formed and how they are broken down. If you want to check you've understood everything in this video, then there are thousands of questions just waiting for you over my website. Knowing how words are made up really helps you understand them. So a monosaccharide is one sugar. A disaccharide is two sugars. And a polysaccharide is lots or many sugars. We can add monosaccharides together to make polysaccharides and disaccharides. Two glucose monosaccharides can be added together to make maltose. The monosaccharides glucose and fructose can be added together to make sucrose. And glucose and galactose can be added together to make lactose. All of these end in O-S-E, os, and that's a really good way for you to identify something that is a sugar. Now polysaccharides are more commonly known as carbohydrates. Depending on the monosaccharide, depending on the structure of it, that will lead into the function of it. And carbohydrates can be used for structure or they can be used for storage. There are two forms of glucose that you need to know about. Glucose and beta glucose. The full structures of these are quite complicated, so don't worry too much about the next bit. I think it's helpful to see what they actually look like. Now don't worry, you will not have to learn this structure. You need to learn a slightly simplified structure of alpha and beta glucose. Where we don't draw everything out fully, but you do need to be able to draw these. The structures for alpha and beta glucose are very, very similar. But over on the right hand side, you'll notice that the hydrogen and the OH group are in different positions. In alpha glucose, the OH group is at the bottom, and in beta glucose, the OH group is at the top. This looks like a very subtle difference when it's written down in 2D on a bit of paper. So I'm sure you're wondering, why does it matter? I'm gonna show you this using Molly mods. These are just molecular models to help us visualize things in 3D. We have carbon in black, bonds are the grey bits, and I'm just going to be making this bit and this bit to show you how they are different. I'm going to start by keeping everything as same as possible. So here we have the carbon connected to the oxygen, and then I'm putting these big pink bits on, and that basically means everything else that is just a bit too complicated to make at the moment. In white I've added the hydrogens on and you can see they're starting to lie differently on the table now. This is the OH group, this is the oxygen and this is the hydrogen that we have here making two of those and then you can see I'm going to add them onto the carbons and one of them will be pointing up and one of them will be pointing downwards. You can see now in 3D that this similar looking 2D picture is actually quite dissimilar in three dimensions. These are what we call non-superimposable. It's a bit like having your left hand and your right hand. They are pretty much the same, but if you put one on top of the uh, each other, then they cannot sit in the same footprint or they cannot sit in the same glove because even though they have the same parts they're made of the same bits they are not the same in space. The shape of things in 3D is really important in science. Here we have one of the compounds and I've made play-doh to show how it fits into something. Prim's being incredibly helpful here. So you can see I've squashed it into the play-doh and it fits. However, if we take the other version of it, it just doesn't fit into the same grooves, the same spaces left. I can squash it and I can squeeze it, but fundamentally it won't fit in there. Whereas the first one, which the Play-Doh was moulded around, fits perfectly. 
which is why, even though it's a very subtle difference when it's drawn 2D on paper, in a biology context, it makes a big difference. Alpha and beta glucose are not the only monosaccharides you need to know about. You also need to know about galactose. Structure to beta glucose. There is also fructose. Fructose is slightly different. I'm first going to draw it this way round so you can see how it compares to the glucose and the galactose. And then I'm going to draw the way that it's more commonly represented with the oxygen at the top. The difference between alpha and beta glucose is the orientation of the alcohol group, the OH group, and the hydrogen on the right hand side. Whereas the difference between beta glucose and galactose is on the left hand side with the orientation of the OH group and the hydrogen group. When two monosaccharides of alpha glucose combine, we end up with maltose. And it is here that the bond is made. They will form a glycosidic bond to give us a disaccharide of maltose. Now this is the way that I've drawn it here. You will also see it drawn slightly differently. Like this in blue, they are the same things, but for chemistry they mean different things, but for biology they mean the same thing. We are also going to have a compound of water come out of this. Alpha glucose and fructose will give us sucrose. Again, we are going to have the bond formed between the OH group and alpha glucose and the OH group on fructose. Forming a bond to give us sucrose and water. Alpha glucose and galactose will give us lactose. The orientation for these is slightly different to the other compounds as we have one OH group going down and one going up. It will still give us a disaccharide and water. In all of these two monosaccharides joining, the bond between these two will be a glycosidic bond, and I've highlighted it here in blue for you. These monosaccharides are joined together by a condensation reaction. And they can be broken apart by a hydrolysis reaction. This is another example where learning the meaning or breaking down the meanings of the words can tell us what is happening. Hydro is water, lysis is break. So breaking by water and a condensation reaction will release water. Looking at our models again, and again I've just made the smaller or a smaller section and we're going to be joining the OH group and the OH group. You can see here there are just too many O's and H's to make a full bond here. So when they break, the bond will be made and what we will have left over is going to be water. You can see the orientation flat here and flat here and this is the bond in the middle and we have water left over. Ouch. Mm, love you too, Krim.